Good afternoon and welcome to our first meeting in February. And I'll call us to order. An invitation tonight, I will leave us an invitation in respect to the flag we are given by Councilman Stewart. Please rise. And Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you have given to our community. We ask that you watch over all our citizens as we fight through the pandemic. And we ask that you give comfort and relief to those who are suffering and for those who have lost loved ones because of the disease, the pandemic. We ask that you further put your hand upon uh, members of our team, especially those that face forward uh, into community, uh, law enforcement, EMS, public works, people who come in contact with our citizens and, and provide them services with us. So to take a, a special hand and put on them, we ask that you give this council wisdom to make decisions, uh, wise decisions that you would be um, pleased. And we also ask that you bless our <coughs> council members who um, are not here tonight and that um, we, we hope to see them soon. We ask all these things we know. Thank you. The minutes of our January 25th meeting have been distributed. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Well, first by Mr. Stewart, second by Mr. John Roberts. All those in favor say aye. Oppose the minutes of January 25th passed unanimously. We have one item of old business, and that is to request consideration of an ordinance to amend section 14.5 of the City of Anderson Zoning Ordinance by adding a provision requiring a minimum floor elevation for new single family dwellings, Mr. King. Mayor and Council, at your last meeting, you referred this item to the Planning Commission. Uh, the Planning Commission considered this item and took this up on February the 2nd, recommended a unanimous, a unanimous approval uh, to the City Council. And this is, uh, we have two readings of it. This is the first reading. Uh, Maurice McKenzie, our Planning Development Director, will go over some of the details of it. Mr. McKenzie. Thank you, Mayor. City's desire to improve aesthetics with new single-family residential construction, it is proposed to add language to the zoning ordinance to require that all new single-family residential detached dwellings um, are to be constructed with a minimum floor elevation at least 12 inches above adjacent grade. So in other words, no more slab on grade houses for aesthetic purposes, they will be built up just a little bit higher. Now, this language is familiar to you because about a month and a half ago when you annexed the 131 acres located off of Harriet Circle near Midway Elementary School, um, you did request to add that type of language in the PDE document and the developer did oblige, so that language is in there. So moving forward from that, um, the um, proposal is to make that language more consistent citywide, so it applies for all new single family residential detached dwellings, whether they're subdivisions or on infill lots throughout the city. And specifically, um, we are proposing to amend section 14.5 of the zoning ordinance to add language that reads as follows. Every new single family detached dwelling directed shall have a minimum finished floor elevation of 12 inches above the adjacent grade. This provision does not apply to garages, carports, or porches, and the zoning administrator may allow additional exemptions based on the established policy. And in your package, there is a short supplemental policy that goes along with this, which is attached. And 
when you referred this a couple of weeks ago, we had some good conversation about this request. It was then forwarded to the Planning Commission because it is an amendment to the zoning ordinance. And they met on February 2nd and unanimously recommended approval. So it's before you tonight, as the city manager mentioned, uh, for first reading. Thank you, sir. Any questions or comments? Mr. Roberts, Jeff Roberts. Uh, Mr. McKenzie, I'm curious, but when this was presented to the group of the PDD, uh, what was their reaction when we had this part of the document? Were they, was it received favorable? It, it was, yes. I think that what they were looking for was consistency throughout, and by doing it this way, I believe that uh, developers will be more comfortable with it because what they want to see is consistency. And I, I think you're going to see the benefit of this in, in time going forward. It, it will make a noticeable difference uh, aesthetically, and there are a number of other benefits that go along with this. And most uh, important as well, I don't think it adversely affects affordability of these homes. So I, I think the benefits greatly outweigh uh, any of that. Negative. So with that, I'd like to recommend that we, first reading, adopt this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Uh, first by Jeff Roberts. Second. Second by Dr. Thompson. We'll enter discussion. Any further comments? Discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously on the first reading. We have three items of new business, and the first item is request consideration of a construction con contract in the main, an amended engineering services contract for the buy by Whitman Creek sewer replacement project. Mr. Kewen. Mayor, Council, the, the items before you, uh, B1 through B3, all deal with our public utilities, uh, which is electric city utilities. Uh, as you know, we have a very specific and planned um, capital outlay for these utilities, uh, what's necessary to upgrade and operate these utilities, and uh, we plan for that accordingly uh, within a five-year plan. And so that's all these items are in accordance with that. And um, Jeff Caldwell, Caldwell, our utilities director, will go to the specifics. Mr. Caldwell. Thank you, Mr. McEwen. Um, as with a lot of these projects, we like to go back in history and kind of tie these to our EPA mandate. So this is one of those projects that uh, was part of, that came out of our EPA mandate and CMOM programs, which CMOM stands for Capacity Management Operation and Maintenance. And that, uh, those programs, there were 10 programs in all, and they, um, the goal of those was to eliminate sewer uh, overflows uh, of untreated wastewater into the environment. Uh, one of those programs specifically was the Capital Improvement uh, Infrastructure Rehabilitation Program. Um, one of the projects that we uh, initially um, saw as a, as a need was a, the replacement and rehabilitation of front lines along Byron and Whitmer Creeks. And those creeks um, come together around the area of uh, Anderson Country Club, the former Anderson Country Club. Um, almost two years ago, you did get approval for uh, the design, bidding, and construction administration phases of the project. We finally uh, got to bid and received bids uh, in January of this year. Uh, for those uh, improvements. We did have uh, three bidders that submitted uh, bids. Uh, we had 10 plant holders at one time. Uh, we believe that several projects that uh, were bid prior to hours and weeks leading up uh, led to some of those dropping off. Um, we did uh, request, uh, several bidders did request the, uh, for us to extend the construction schedule for the project. Uh, we believe that did uh, lead to more competitive uh, bidding but it also leads to more engineering costs as far as construction administration and, and on-site uh, resident services. So uh, in addition to the low bid uh, of Moorhead construction at $2,117,910, we're also asking for approval uh, of the on-site engineering services, which allows us to have a trained person on-site uh, to monitor uh, the progress of the construction, make sure it's uh, constructed and installed uh, according to the plans and specifications that any questions that come up are, are addressed adequately and efficiently and we have accurate, accurate record keeping and, um, and accurate pay, payment applications. Uh, the cost of those services are uh, about $135,000 and moving forward with this will uh, provide us with a more reliable sewer system 
and eliminate the stop ups that we uh, are, are that, that are our goals. Um, this plan and project is funded from the sewer fund, and with that, we've uh, asked for, um, your approval to move forward with construction with more air construction and the engineering services. Thank you, Ms. Caldwell. Um, I'll open up the questions. Ms. Stewart, tell me a little bit about our history with Moorhead Construction, if you don't mind. We have we had any problems in the past? We, have they took on a project this size with us before? Those type of things. Yes, um, they have actually have taken on bigger and smaller pipes than this for us. Uh, they constructed our Rocky River Relief Sewer, which is 60 inch pipe uh, running from our uh, treatment plant. And, and those, that uh, line went all the way out to where the county intercepts us at. Uh, Subdivision off of um, Old Road, and yeah. they al they also helped us out with the uh, the emergency sewer repair on West Market Street um, several months ago. Uh, the uh, the additional one hundred seventy five thousand dollars to design south. Tell me a little bit about what that fee is about again. Okay, so when when we uh, were going through the bidding process and, and bidders were asking questions and asking for uh, specific asking more specific questions about the project. They requested uh, more time to construct the project. Uh, they didn't feel like the, the time frame that we gave them to finish, to start and finish construction was adequate. Uh, we reviewed that and, and granted that extra time. Um, so the extra time that this project's gonna go on is we're gonna, it will require more payment applications, um, more construct, more questions, more uh, request for information for, for field changes and stuff like that. So that's part of that instruction administration. Um, the resident services is something that's brand new to this, I mean, what we're doing here um, for this project. We, we've normally done that, but we, have, we did not set aside any funds for that uh, in the um, earlier, earlier approval process. Are there any contingency built into this $2 million price tag, or, is, or, or is there not? And then, um, um, I guess, I guess I guess the other thing is there any cost savings if they finish it uh, ahead of time? Does the city receive any cost savings or is there going to be a split between that or how, how does that work? Yeah, we, uh, we will realize all the cost savings if they, if, on the engineering services if they finish um, quicker than the 11 months a lot. Um, and there's also in the in Moorhead's bid, we set aside some, um, some items that may come up if we have to have extra concrete or extra aggregate, uh, things like that. Um, so those things we may use, we may not. Those those were about eighty-eight thousand dollars. So there's there is some potential to come in under this. And uh, in addition, it's been our practice on uh, our major capital projects that we put in place uh, about two years ago to have on-site special services uh, <coughs> group or third party uh, to check for uh, walks being installed to the plans for quality assurance and uh, that, that has worked out really well for us on, on all our recent projects. And so, uh, but Mr. Caldwell, Caldwell speaks of the additional engineer with the resident services and that's, that's what that is. So, uh, so we would just receive any cost savings from the design and size contract but nothing from the uh, contractor's amount if he finishes ahead of schedule? No, yeah, not, not from his. Not, not particularly just because of the, him finishing faster than that. Um, if, if there's certain things that are not installed and we are not put in as part of the project, then we would realize the unit cost savings of that particular item. Thank you. Any other questions, Ms. Roberts, Jeff? One comment and then one question. Um, I have full faith and confidence in more infrastructure. They're very capable. And this is certainly something within their capability. Um, question. Um, is there any additional capacity being built into this improvement for future development? Yes, there is. Um, yeah, we are we are realizing additional flow capacity in those lines. Where I think we're going from um, 15 inch lines in some places, 18 and 15 inch lines to 27 and 24 inch lines. Okay, and that's that's probably realizing about double the capacity of what is currently there. Very good. Good evening. Mayor, I'd like to we accept this bid. Today. We'll have a first by Mr. Jeff Roberts, second by Mr. Newton. Um, any further discussion? Uh, <coughs> Jeff, I, I would guess that the, the original budget and the bids, the gap between that is just 
the, the, the stoke grew on you? Between the two, between the three beers that we had? Well, even the, the budget amount. Which was... Yeah. Okay. So the original budget amount? The original engineering budget? Yes. Well, yeah. the, over, the overall project was what, what one point? Right at two million? I think it was right at two million, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a, um, I'd say just the, the cost of materials cost and increasing and, and like that. Um, yeah. Could be, that's, that's one of the things we did talk to, we actually did talk to Moorhead about how quick he thought he could really do this. And he, he was very cautious because of COVID, not having the, the workers um, that, he, that he needed. Could do. Had a first and second, all those in the first side. Opposed? Thank you, Jeff. Oops. Our next item is request consideration of a wastewater treatment plant instrumental upgrade project. Instrumentation upgrade project. Mr. Caldwell, you're still up. All right. Uh, David, do you want me to? Uh, Mr. Caldwell. Okay, great. So uh, back in 2006, 2008, we, have, we upgraded and expanded both of our treatment plants in those, in those years. Um, and we did install state of the art to allow for uh, controls of the, of the equipment and uh, daily reporting for, reg for regulatory compliance. Um, over the years, uh, we've had to replace several pieces and, and just keep that in good repair. Um, but other, these systems are now becoming obsolete and technology has advanced. And so uh, in order to continue those operations, it requires an upgrade of the, PL of the PLCs. And we have, I believe it's 10 at the Rocky River plant and seven at the Genesee plant. Uh, we're planning to do two at each plant uh, per year in order to start, start bringing all those up to, to new technology. Um, doing that will afford us to have extra parts that are still in operation from, those, from the PLCs that we're replacing in order to use spare parts if needed to hopefully and hopefully allow us to finish this plan of, of two at each plant per year. Um, the uh, instrumentation developer and the, the prior, prior, proprietary software uh, developer is MR Systems. Um, they have provided a quote for each plant. Um, for the Genesee plant, it's around $66,000. For the Rocky River plant, it's around $68,000. Um, and in order to provide flexibility, because we do believe we may find some things that we do need to replace while they're here, be more uh, cost efficient, uh, cost effective while they're here. So we would like to recommend a budget of $80,000 for each plant in order to um, take care of any of those things that do come up. Um, these are, this equipment is essential to our daily operations and uh, it is funded through uh, wastewater treatment plants repair and replacement accounts and funds. So, uh, our recommendation would be to approve this project not to exceed 160000 Thank you. Any comments, questions? Ms. Stewart? Uh, so I guess it's pretty good. I guess uh, when we first installed these back in 2006, we were looking at probably the components that have given us a life expectancy of about 16 years. Is that it, was, it may have been, I mean, could be a little less than that, but I mean, some of it has, some of it's been replaced along the way and just got us to this point. So, um, but I, it seems like they're, they're, the instrumentation uh, equipment is starting to, they're starting to make some of the components obsolete. Now, I'll, I'll add it to as far as the financial side. Uh, with the council, we've been very intentional about um, adding funds to both plants. Uh, we call that the R&R &R budget. Uh, and, you know, if we don't use it that year, it rolls over the next. But everything is mechanical there, uh, operates 24-7, and so uh, we realize that things are aging. Uh, you can get new pumps that are more energy efficient, and that fund's been very good for us. Um, that council approved several years ago, uh, so items like this come up, their plan is taking care of, uh, it's not a surprise to us in the budget, and uh, we're able to, to fund it. Good, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Mayor, I have a motion that we approve the request for $80,000 for each plant uh, for the generosity at the Rocky River Wastewater Treatment Department in the amount of $160,000. Second. Uh, first by Mr. Stewart, second by Dr. Thompson. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The passage unanimously. 
Our next slide is of course consideration of an engineering contract for the Evergreen Area Water Line Replacement Project. Ms. Cole. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as part of our water master plan and long range capital plan that was actually adopted in 2011, uh, we updated in 2018 as part of our rate study, so we had about, um, about 10 years worth of uh, projects planned out. Uh, this is one of the projects that um, went, was high on our priority um, in order to um, move lines from backyards of, of homes where uh, over the years those lines have, um, are now uh, enclosed out by some fences, there's animals, um, housing additions have been built very close to to our water lines, um, the out, uh, portable outbuildings, things like that, just make it difficult for us to get equipment in there to to uh, properly maintain it. Um, not to mention for our meter readers to get in there and, and properly uh, read and and, um, and build a, build those uh, uses. So uh, this project is in the Evergreen. We call it the Evergreen Area Project. Um, Evergreen Street is uh, runs off of Glen Street, which is right near uh, intersects uh, West Wicker Street. And so uh, I think that's the road that maybe the old boys' home may have been on, was Evergreen. Yes. So it's down, down in that area. Um, the, streets, the, the streets that are included are Strickland Avenue, Finley Street, Nixon Street, Foster Street, Ritchie Street, and Gilbert Street. And so uh, we have, uh, we asked for an engineering proposal from Jose McCormick and Wallace, who was uh, who was selected through an RFP process for water system projects uh, some years ago. And so um, I, the, um, the services and the cost of those services are outlined there for preliminary design, final design, bidding, construction administration, and some other things if needed for a grand, the whole, uh, grand total of those services is $106,500. And we have a, a overall budget uh, for the project of $750,000. And so we have the map. The maps included in your package on the yes. next page to refer yeah. to that as well. I would imagine that this would hopefully fall into the next calendar year, the project itself, obviously. Um, any other questions, comments, Ms. Roberts? Um, Mr. Caldwell, is this part of the old Appleton, Appleton Mill? Site. Yeah, it's, it's very close to Apple Mill side. You know, on that that mill's on the this side of Glen Street. Right, and that sort of leads into the next question: Are there other areas out there around other mill sites that may have similar situations? There, there's some. There's a lot more with sewer than there is with the water. Um, but there is there is some out there in the South Lyon Street area, maybe the Lyons Mill. I'm not sure exactly what the name of that mill was on uh, on the south side. So this could come up again. Yes, it could. Um, this was this was one that we really had no access to, and it, it really came up on priority of being able to being able to maintain it properly. And, and as I see it from the plan or the map, it looks like the lines are going to be relocated into the streets. Yeah, what we will. Our preference will be along the streets, not in the streets, so we don't have a, a, a huge uh, repaving because I don't have a lot of repaving in this cost estimate. Well, that was our plan is to try to get, yeah, try to get it on the uh, on the edge of the streets and the right ways to avoid to avoid the streets. Yeah. Okay. But but also the benefit being getting them out of the backyard, um, yeah. which is not ideal, ideal for us in service as well. But you know there are a number of mill sites around that we basically inherited. Uh, those systems. That's right. So this this is going to come up again. Sure. Well, it's just a sheer number of maintenance tasks that we've done in this area over the last five years. Um, it outweighs any other area that we have. Um, this just maintenance is extensive. Mr. Right. Yeah, question. Speaking of maintenance, didn't we have like a load pressure issue on one of these streets a couple of years ago that it caused a problem? Or one of the pipes, I, we couldn't. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I, may have, uh, like I said, we've been over there a lot. Okay. Uh, I think we actually, I was looking today and we have a, a work order to repair a leak there now. Um, so we've been over there multiple, multiple times over the last several years. If that may, I'll make a motion. We uh, accept the first one. Uh, first by Mr. John Rogers. Second by Mr. Stewart. Mr. Stewart. Uh, Jeff, you know, uh, 
Have we used, hopefully, McCormick and Wallace in the past? The name just doesn't ring a bell with me on yeah. other projects. Yes, sir. We've, uh, we've been using them for our water project since probably 2013. And Design South, they were more or less on the sewer side. Is that how yeah. that balanced out? I mean, we looked at, we looked at lining up people who would do the project for water and sewer, and I just couldn't remember. That's, that's the, that was the main thing we did was kind of split those, split them in that way. Right. Uh, but we also, it gave us the, the ability to say, okay, if we don't, if we don't think this price is fair, we can, we can, or, the, or if we don't like the, the services you're providing, then we can, we can go each way. And this is a project too big for our staff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the majority of this job is outside the city limits, but within our service area. Yes, sir. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor, sir? Aye. Oppose. Jeff, true to form, you don't ever ask a little bit of money. You always ask a whole lot of money. Call us money. I apologize. I didn't know. Thank you. It's just the cost of doing business. We have an executive session. Uh, Ms. McEwen? Uh, the executive session, uh, we're going to provide you several updates from our city attorney and follow up to questions that the council had. Uh, no action um, is requested from council tonight on any public vote. Thank you, sir. I didn't take a motion to do an executive session. So we'll start the first one. Let's do it. Second by Mr. John Roberts. All those in favor, side. Opposed, we'll stay in executive session. And we'll go. That's true. I would entertain a motion to come out of the executive session. We have a first by Mr. Jeff Roberts. Second by Mr. John Roberts. All those in favor, say aye. Opposed? We stand out of the executive session. In the executive session, I think Mr. McEwen indicated we just got um, some legal advice uh, from our city attorney on some contracting matters. We don't have any action to take. Uh, at this time, we'll probably foresee it in the future. Um, I also want to say before we adjourn, Councilman Stewart made a good point that we are in February and it's Black History Month. So uh, we have a, a, a lot to celebrate, have a couple of things going on. So participate if you can and, and um, learn something. And um, I think that's important. I didn't take a motion to adjourn. Uh, first by Ms. Newton, second by Mr. Jeffrey Roberts. All those in favor, say aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned.